Again, this is another sign of the times, an analysis, and a commentary. Vladimir Putin has become the new Antichrist. John chapter 8 verse 44 You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Vladimir Putin is a liar and is of the devil. For Vladimir Putin, truth is just another front line. In the tense weeks before Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, Russian officials denied that it planned anything of the sort, denouncing the United States and its NATO allies for stoking panic and anti-Russian hatred. When it did invade, the officials denied it was at war. Since then, the Kremlin has cycled through a torrent or barrage of lies to explain why it had to wage a special military operation against a sovereign neighbor. Neo-Nazis, genocide, American biological weapons factories, birds and reptiles trained to carry pathogens into Russia, Ukrainian forces bombing their own cities, including theaters sheltering children, or perhaps clowns riding around on little bicycles carrying bombs, or maybe the tooth fairy putting poison under Russian children's pillows. Lies and more lies. Disinformation in wartime is as old as war itself, but today war unfolds in the age of social media and digital diplomacy. That has given Russia and its allies in China and elsewhere powerful means to prop up the claim that the invasion is somehow justified exploiting disinformation to rally its citizens at home and to discredit its enemies abroad. Truth has simply become another front in Russia's war. Or rather, Vladimir Putin's war. So then, using a barrage of increasingly outlandish falsehoods or lies, President Vladimir B. Putin has created an alternative reality, one in which Russia is at war not with Ukraine, but with a larger, more pernicious enemy in the West. Even since the war began, the lies have gotten more and more bizarre, transforming from claims that true sovereignty for Ukraine was possible only under Russia, made before the attacks to those about migratory birds carrying bioweapons. They say Russia's message has proved successful domestically, where the Kremlin's claims go unchallenged. Surveys suggest a majority of Russians support the war effort. Internationally, the campaign has seeped into an information ecosystem that allows them to spread, to spread around the world, reaching audiences that were once harder to reach. The power of Vladimir Putin's claim that the invasion is justified comes not from the veracity of any individual falsehood meant to support it, but from the broader argument. Individual lies about bioweapons labs or crisis actors are advanced by Russia as swiftly as they are debunked, with little consistency or logic between them but supporters stubbornly cling to the overarching belief that something is wrong in Ukraine and supposedly Russia will fix it. Those connections prove harder to shake even as new evidence is introduced. That mythology and its resilience in the face of fact-checking and criticism 
reflects the ability of autocrats and malign actors to completely brainwash us to the point where we don't see what's in front of us. Russia's campaign has gone beyond simply propagating its message. It has moved swiftly to silence dissenting points of view that could cut through the fog of war and discourage the Russian population. Mr. Putin's public remarks, which dominate state media, have become increasingly strident. He has warned that nationalist sentiment in Ukraine is a threat to Russia itself, as is NATO expansion. Revelation chapter 16 verse 8 Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch humans with fire. 9 And humans were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. 10 Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom or nation became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. 11. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. It's still about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations? And that should be a very important question to ask. And all these are more signs.